I'm Max Beasley, and you're listening to the 5D Podcast. Get yourself ready for an interdimensional sensory experience. Welcome all to the dimension of sci-fi, fantasy, and horror. This is the 5D Podcast. Hello there and welcome to the 5D Podcast, brought to you by Stuart and Zach from 5D, 5D-Blog.com. Welcome to those of you on iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn and Stitcher. Be sure to check out the 5D-Blog.com website for blog articles, competitions and news. And of course, check out the 5D YouTube channel, channel the details for which can be found on the website. Don't judge me. That was terrible. <laughs> that was shocking. <laughs> Oh, terrible. I see you in the corner of my eye, just rolling your eyes, going, no, no, I know. Keep rolling, mate, keep rolling. So shame we're not video recording this to get those eye rolling. How are you doing? I'm good. You? Yeah, I'm good. I'm all right. It's um, it's a bit of a weird time. It is. I'm on lock, lockdown. I, I, I am too on, on lockdown, just a little bit away from you. So we're, you know, um, how long are we going to be locked down for? It could be it could be days, weeks, or months. Even. Who, knows? Who knows? Yeah. And there's no food, and there's no entertainment, there's no sport. Everything's kind of stopped. So basically, you just got podcasts to listen to. Indeed. So I, I think so, I should go. So let, let's do what we can to help the people. <laughs> is that our is that our remit? I is that what so. we're here for? We're here to help the people. Should I put something out on Twitter, basically saying doing that? Because I've seen quite a few people do that. You know, while you've got time and while you're at home. You know, basically what they're saying is, while you're at home worrying about people dying and no food and that, listen to a podcast and it'll be great, you know. I, I could do that. I could be that shallow, couldn't I? Uh, this is the first time we've talked, isn't it, for about two, three weeks? We, we've been a little uh, bit as busy. A, as, a two, as a twosome. Mm-hmm. Um, because um, we... As a, we've, had, we, we've had some um, much more interesting people to come on and speak. Well, this is the thing. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of waiting now for some kind of famous actor just to step in and just say, hi, how are you doing, guys? But it's just me and you. So, unfortunately, you know, people that are tuning in that have been used to what we've had in the last couple of weeks. We've had, well, essentially, we've had the cast of The Outsider. We did. Uh, uh, on, well, part of the cast. So, um, it, no, it, it, it's genu- genuinely been really good. Um we had, first of all, we had Yul Vasquez on about two, three weeks ago. Um, then followed by Mark Menchaka, whose name I can properly say now without, you know, screwing it up. Um, then last week, we had Max Beasley. Um, um, about all three about as cool as each other. I don't know, I'm not going to say, who who's your favourite? Go on, say who is your, your favourite, and I'll let them know then which, which one you said was. I enjoyed all three equally. <laughs> Do you know what it was? It was awesome. So I mean, Yule was kind of the catalyst for it all, for it all. Yeah, yeah. Because he yeah. kind of, um, you know, he was approached on Twitter by you, the stalker. Sto- and, I stalked on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. It, all of a sudden, he, he, he was he was super keen to be on, and we were just like, really, what? And yeah. then that was kind of the catalyst because from his um, chat on the show, then obviously Mark Minchaka, who plays Jack. Um, he That's the kind of world as well, isn't it, Marvin Chuck? So nice. He, you know, the 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 chat with Yule kind of, you know, sparked his interest, and then yeah. after chatting to Mark as well, Max freaking Beasley Max joined the queue. Freaking Beasley, yeah. And again, you know, uh, and we had them all on, um, on video as well. So if anybody hasn't seen or listened to them, just go on the. The sources that we were at, and you'll find them on the YouTube channel. You've got the video versions as well, and you've got. You didn't unfortunately see um, because when 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 Max was in, it was in his kind of man cavey um, garage, um, and opened up, and we had Beverly Hills outside, didn't he? When he opened up his garage it before it started, weirdly wet, but yeah, it did look yeah pouring down and stuff, and uh, you know we admired his you know the whole setup that he got there, which was which was cool. Um, all three of them were, you know, real, uh, genuinely really nice and really helpful, and they've been great since as well. You know, with, um, you know, just communicating and retweeting stuff. And and, and, and then we, I mean, we, we we had great chats with them before and after as well. 
Uh, yeah, what, one thing I do remember from Yule, um, it was, I, I think it was before we actually started and we said to him about thanks for coming on and, and, yeah. and I'm going to paraphrase, but he 100% said something along these lines. He says that he listened to a couple of, you know, a previous episode and he said that yeah. we sounded like cool dudes. <laughs> That's not paraphrased. I think that's probably precisely what he said. I I'm, think I'm going to put that on my LinkedIn. <laughs> it's a shame we weren't caught, we weren't recording that. We should have just surreptitiously recorded. Just can you just say that again? You'll wear what cool dudes, you know? So, he, but he genuinely did say that. He, he, he did. did say and, that. and that's you, Vasquez, you the Vasquez. coolest of the dudes. Yeah, 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 and you know, um, I know it sounds like a bit of a loving for these guys, but you know, we talked a little bit, like you said before, and then after as well. Um, we got a little, we got a couple of bits which we're not allowed to talk about. A um, bit of tidbits about maybe things that are going on and, and and you know that sort of thing, that might or might not be happening. Um, <clears throat> and you know we said thank you to them all, and they said thanks to us. And Max was like, thank you for your time. He's like, what what do you mean? Thank you for your time. <laughs> <laughs> yep, thank okay. you, Max. Thank you. Thank Jeez. you for your time. Thank you. Um, Max was great because. Um, with you, we'd kind of, we didn't want to kind of abuse his, his time, and we'd kind of agreed before. I know about forty-five minutes, and I think we went over by about ten minutes with that. Yeah. Same, same thing with Mark. We went about an hour with Mark, and it was about an hour and twenty minutes with with Max. By the time we just started in getting it. laxer and laxer. I know, I know. So getting too comfortable maybe, with our A-list friends. Yeah. So, so if, if if there are any other A-listers out there who want to come on, the, you've got a tough act to follow. Cause you've got three cool guys that have been on already. Then you know, let us know, and <clears throat> maybe we'll make time. You know, we'll we'll see what our schedule is, and see whether or not, um, you, you know, we could fit you in. But I'm I'm sure we'll give it a go. Um, I, I, what I liked about all three was was you know the obvious reason why we got them in the first place. Well, one of the reasons is because of you know the outsider. So we got a, a lot of really kind of quite interesting but, stuff. But what was <laughs> funny about that was um, we got them in because obviously. We're massive fans of The Outsider. It was a topical thing because it was on at the time. Yeah. But their careers were so entertaining and so vast. <laughs> that much, that did we? we? Yeah, Outside. we didn't really... Because really, <laughs> we always thought we'll save Outsider till the end because, yeah. um, you know, um, a little bit of a clickbait, get everyone to keep listening until we start talking about The Outsider, I guess. But um, on the lead up to that, these guys have just done so much cool stuff and they have so many yeah. cool stories that it was it was kind of hard to get through. Well, with you, we talked about like... <clears throat> Um, his, his music career. Then we talked about his, his first appearance in Tales of the Tales of the Crypt, or Tales from the Crypt, War of the Worlds, um, Captain Phillips. Um, by the time we actually got to the Outsider, I think we spent just a sh- quite a short amount. We talked a little Same bit about his penis as well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for, yeah. That could be taken slightly out of context, couldn't it? Um, and then Mark, same thing with his career, because obviously Mark Menchuk has been in Ozark, mm-hmm. and uh, we talked about his dancing in the Lone Bellow um, cool video, video, which is incredible. It's so cool. And then a little bit about the outsider. I think <clears throat> I do seem to remember Max. We got talking again so once we'd finished uh, on the recording bit. Um, we talked to Max actually for about 10, 15 minutes after that, if memory serves me correctly, because we were just chatting. And I think he actually told us a little bit more about The Outsider, which is not part of the... He was talking about the scene where they filmed the the, the final kind of showdown mm-hmm. in the in the woods. Um, and he hated that scene because it was re- just really uncomfortable. He said yeah. it was great being with the guys, but... You yeah, think... got, got a bit by ants and... Yeah, the, it was like the, two or three days. The cave yeah, was like yeah. boiling, humid and horrible. The cave was really hot and hard to breathe, and he spent about a day just lying down um, because he wanted, to, obviously, to, for it to be authentic. So he's playing the line when he was shot. He's on the ground, and he was being bitten by ants all day. I don't think we actually got that in the main thing, but which is, you know, it was really nice. So um, yeah, people want to listen to those those three little bits and pieces. Um, you know, go ahead and listen. But they were genuinely nice guys. They seemed to really to get on with each other as well. That's what came across, don't yeah, you think? Definitely. Yeah. Um, when they were talking about you know the whole ensemble, they were really complimentary about each other. Um, there didn't seem to be any kind of egos or anything you know like that. So yeah, it was real cool, real cool. Um, <clears throat> so talking about the outsider, we finally that's, I know it's finished um, a couple of weeks ago now. Um, but um, did you get manage to see the last episode? I think of you course. Did? Yeah, yeah. Um, the the reviews have been a little bit mixed. 
Yeah. Well, in the, the last episode, I think. Yeah, you know? I mean, I saw a lot of stuff about people thinking it was a bit anticlimactic. It, you know, it didn't quite end with the punch that they would have kind of anticipated. What did you think? What did you think? I, I, I liked it. I mean, yeah. it was weird because a lot of people said anticlimactic. Now, I can kind of get what they're saying because it did, from about half of the episode towards the end, it did get a little bit more somber. There was all kind of, you know, like happy it was over, you know, um, getting a little bit of closure and such. But that yeah. first half an hour was, like, crazy. Yeah, I mean, when... Um, <clears throat> because I think, was it the end of season... Uh, sorry, the end of episode nine when they, they all set off for the woods? That was That's yeah. right, is because um Because then, cause then think... um, Jack takes the shot right at the end. Yeah, that's right, because Blabbermouth, Max's character, um, had, men- had talked to his brother and basically that had given it away. Yeah. So they had to go to the, the you know the woods to try and warn the other guys that they were they were, they were going to be like ambushed, and then uh, Malt's character, who was I was I was so annoying now when I was watching these with with my wife because every time either Mark or um, Yul or Max came on, I was that's my mate, mm. that's that's our mate, you know, and it was like it was really infantile, but it was so funny for me anyway. Um, so that was episode nine. Then it, yeah, episode ten is when <clears throat> Jack. We just went a bit well and truly kind of bonkers. Uh, I wasn't, I know we we're expecting people to die, but it was kind of, it was just so, it was just so sudden, wasn't it, yeah. at the beginning of that episode? Because you had, you had the lawyer getting one straight through the head, wasn't it? Um, mm-hmm. Pretty straight away. You had, oh, <clears throat> poor old um, Holly's guy. Um, just trying to get away and get, get get help, and he got was it burnt alive? He got in the car and stuff. Well, I think know? I think it took a few rounds to the chest first. And yeah, then, yeah, you know. yeah. Um, I thought that first that first sort of twenty minutes, um, as you say, was really kind of it was just edge of your seat stuff. Yeah. Um, so I I really like the last episode. I, I I know what people I can see what people saying that maybe they were expecting. Um, it all to be tied up, but I like the way it kind of left a few, you know, loose ends, a few unanswered questions, mm-hmm. because it's kind of it's kind of left it open for another season, whether or not yeah. they have the same character. I, I kind of hope they don't. I think I think I mean I enjoyed the season, I enjoyed the the series a lot, um, but I don't know. I feel like if it was to do again with the second one, there's no mystery anymore. We all kind of know what it is. We've seen it. We've we've lived it. And... Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, that's where the book obviously went to. So there's no real source material now. I don't think so. Anyway, um, I heard rumours that they may explore the the Holly and Ralph character. So you know, the kind of you know the the those two as 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 forging a partnership. Because it, it, he did say that he'd like to work with her again and all mm-hmm. this stuff. Give each other a hug and and all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> And you also had the thing at the end, which might have been a bit of a red herring, I think. You know, the fact that she... I think it was the end credits thing, wasn't it? Where she she saw Jack's face behind her in the mirror, wasn't it? Yeah. And when she was sat there, she was kind of absentmindedly scratching her back of her neck and her arm. And she had a... looks to be a scratch on her arm that maybe she'd been caught by yeah. El Cuckoo. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you my favourite bit, I think, from that episode with the ending because obviously when Jack goes a little bit nuts that was all good to watch as well mm. but one thing I really liked is when um, they were in the cave all were, almost all was said and done and Holly you know, takes the knife she goes back um, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. she stabs a cuckoo in the chest and then walks away but then as they're leaving those two kids who was in the cave um, just appeared out of nowhere Yeah, yeah. and Ralph just stops and is just looking at them and is just like yeah this is over, <laughs> and it just walks back, picks up the rock, and just drops it on its face. <laughs> it was heavy. It was pretty heavy going, and I like the the kind of horror elements. It, 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 you know, it was pretty authentic to the source material. And I know you haven't read the book, um, <clears throat> but the the book itself, I thought was was you know a, a, one of his really better later books, Stephen King. And I just love what they did with it, and I just love the fact that they kind of changed a few things without being too. You know, to sort of, you know, too different. There one, there were one or two sort of differences towards towards the end, but nothing, nothing too major, I don't think. Um, but whether or not they have a second series, I, I, I disagree with you. I'd, I'd like to see a second series. Mm. I, I think there's with the characters there, it, as long as they kind of stay authentic to how they played it and how they made it as well, because you know the look of it was 
real we we, we talked about it before didn't we about how the, the you know the production the, the 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 way it looked was kind of true detective esque yeah. in some ways um, and had a, a very special feel to it so and the reception was really good as well because I yeah. mean I've got a couple of friends at work who I've mentioned about and they are now watching it and they're yeah. feeling the same buzz that we felt. Did, did, what, did when you advise them? Did you tell them our mates were in it? Our friends were. Of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's of course you you can't do without. Um, I'm thinking the I'm just trying to find on Rotten Tomatoes now, but I think the the overall. Um, Ratings were in the high eighties, nearly ninety percent for for you know the ratings that they had, yeah. and I know that in in terms of uh, particularly the final episode, the viewing figures for HBO were really high as well. So you know it has kind of you know um, it has called public public's imagination to a certain degree, and I think it's available for streaming and everything now anyway. So so yeah, I, I loved it. I thought it was cool. Yeah. I thought it was cool. Um, so we're in the middle of. Um, a bit of a, a kind of virusy, pandemic-y thing. Um, you know, it's kind of like, what the hell is going on? It's not quite as cool as I anticipated this apocalypse at the moment, I must admit. You know, no. people fighting over toilet rolls rather than fighting zombies. I just don't quite... You know, it's not quite as sexy as I thought, this this apocalypse. And uh, nobody's come knocking on my door <clears throat> as yet to ask me to be the leader and, and to no. get everybody... You know, which I'm... Expecting any day now because you've thought, got your cowboy hat though, right? I have got my hat and I've got, but I haven't got any guns. You know, this is a thing that now you kind of wish maybe you know that we were in America where we could just go around and you know take our six gun with us or whatever our Magnum or whatever whatever guns we got, and um, maybe threaten somebody else over their toilet roll allocation. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I will just say that Five D does not endorse um, using your weapons to to take any toilet roll from others. Is that what you're saying? Uh, is that what <laughs> was I saying now? Was I agreeing? <laughs> All right, okay. <clears throat> Maybe not then. Well, People I just... mean, it's, it's going crazy just now because, I mean, in the UK here, we've got a little bit of a lockdown. It's it's not as, as, as tough as some other countries, but we've got now cinema houses are closing down yeah. um, for the foreseeable future. I'm not going to get political, but it would be nice if the government actually made their mind up and actually said to people, this is what's going to happen. But, you know, you know, it's one of those things. And, 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 that's, uh, and with, the, with, the, with the film houses closing, it means that we are not really in a position to be watching any new films. Everything's seemingly postponed and put back. And Yeah, well, we got um, Fast and Furious 9 or F9 or what the hell it's no! called. No! I know. God, what the hell? Damn it! What oh, the I'm hell? so sad. We were going to wow. we do special. Don't you remember? We yeah. said we were going to do... You're going to drag me along, kicking and screaming, to see um, Vin minus Dwayne in mm -hmm. time. And uh, that's not going to happen. I don't know when that's been put off till now. But, you know, I suppose when everybody's stopped, you know, sneezing and coughing and, and all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the cinema's closed. Um, I'm hoping to God Netflix and... and um, Amazon and everything else keeps well, going. Well, I mean, Disney Plus is coming at the right time for the UK. You reckon? Well, of course it is, because we're all yeah. on, we're, we're all going to be in our houses, so Disney Plus is well, coming, coming at the right time. But um, Mandalor Mandalorian. One awkward thing is that the UK government are urging um, streaming services to reduce their um, essential. I don't know. The, I think it's the bit rate that they're talking about reducing. All right. Okay. Because we're at risk. Of everybody's streaming at once. That the actual, I think I think the term says that our internet will die. I think I saw in one of the papers. Oh, you? <laughs> no. So I um. No. Oh God. I I think I, I mean it's it's a bit awkward if you're a pay for like the premium kind of Netflix package because yeah. if they're reducing yeah. it, then you're not really going to get the advantage for your money, I guess. Well, I've I've already reduced my package, um, as it were. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> it's a bit cold. Uh, I've reduced my package for a certain um, satellite TV company um, for their sports. I, um, I can imagine, um, considering yeah. there's no sports. There's no sports. I got sick and tired of switching on and seeing the replays of whatever games from 25 years ago and stuff. So I've had to get rid of that for the time being. Hope to God that will come back. But then we've got movies. Like you say, there's going to be... They'll have a few movies in, in, in the kind of pipeline for the streaming services, but... Yeah, we're gonna we're kind of gonna get start start maybe have to crack out the DVDs and stuff. You know, maybe it's a good job I never threw all my DVDs away. I will have to find my DVD player. I'm yeah. not too sure. 
where the hell that is. So I think in um, Disney Plus next week, I think, isn't it? Um, yeah, about, year 24th. Uh, 24th. I've, I've already pre-ordered it. Cool. All right. So I'm thinking then maybe, because I was thinking, why, why don't we next, well, I wasn't thinking, you said it, and I now kind of got to add to it. Um, we're going to talk a little Are you bit next. Steal week? my idea, just like oh. you stole my questions from Max oh, Beasley. Oh, here we go. Here we go. You, you're a bit miffed because I kind of prompted you because you're a big fan of Suits. And well, I, said, I was back when it was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when Max was in it, obviously. Oh, of course. And uh, and I said to Max, "Oh, Zach has got Zach's a big fan of Suits." And then I, I thought you maybe hadn't heard me or maybe the connection was back. She didn't kind of say anything straight away. And I think then you were about to and I kind of just stepped in. So I apologize because I then asked him your question. It's fine, you know. Yeah. And you were also a bit annoyed that me and Max had shared a little FaceTime call the previous... No, I'm fine. I you, mean, oh, I, I, have I, you got over that? Yeah, you passed that. <laughs> I had two FaceTime calls with Max. He's such a uh, such a cool guy, but you never quite you never got that, did you? So, no. um, um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. So, um, yeah. So next week we've got Disney Plus. Go, Mandal- yeah. So next week's episode that was it. Uh, Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. We could talk about. We're going to get a chance to maybe watch a couple of episodes before next weekend. Maybe. But also, as well, your idea as well. We're a going to pandemic talk about special. Pandemic special, which is not bad taste at all, is it? Um, to do a pandemic special when there's a real pandemic going on. I think it's pretty apt. Mm. I think it's good. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit pandemics and all this stuff, and a bit of Mandalorian um, as well. Um, talk about films being cancelled. Um, this week, um, Quiet Place Two was supposed to be out. I think on the eighteenth. I think I was asking you to remember a couple of days ago. It was supposed to be out this week anyway. Yeah. Uh, um, and that's been put back as well, mm-hmm. which is a shame because we'd kind of uh, we were probably going to go and see that because you'd prepared by watching a Quiet, Quiet Place. Place. What? Yeah. Yeah. Um, finger on the pulse, as always. Mm-hmm. Five D podcast. Um, when was it out? A year ago, two years ago, two thousand eighteen. Two thousand eighteen, and you finally got around to seeing it after me saying to you for God knows how long. This is like one of the, the greatest modern horror films, you know, whatever. Um, so you saw, you finally saw the Quiet Place. I did. Uh, what What the hell did you think? Think of it. I thought it was. Because awesome. you're not a horror fan, are you? You're no, not a horror fan. You know. Yeah, a friend of mine said about watching it because it was on Netflix, and I was like, ah, I'm not really a fan of horror films. I'll probably give it a miss. And he was saying, it's not really a horror film. Um, it's more of a, like a, I don't know, a, an edge-of-your-seat thriller, I would say. But, I mean, there are distinct horror elements in it as well, I would argue. It, 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 I mean, I would put it in the horror... Yeah, I would, <laughs> put, it, I would put it in... Technically... Yeah, I would put it in the horror bracket, too. Yeah. Um, as well, but it did. It, it's not like you know, like a scare you horror. It's like a tense. Well, um, unbeknownst to you, I didn't actually say to you, but I watched it again um, a couple of nights ago because I knew we were going to be talking probably about Quiet Place too. Um, and so I watched it again. It's the first time I've seen it since I watched it the first time. For some reason, I just never got back to it. Um, and I still loved it. I thought it was still hugely, I mean, enjoyable. Um, what I really liked is the fact that they kind of they kind of dropped it in after the, you know, the this kind of alien invasion or whatever the hell they are, because it never really explained what these things are, um, these things that can only attack by sound. Yeah. Um, um, what I liked is it kind of just dropped it in the middle of, because it was like 80 days into it or something, wasn't it, when it, when it, first, when it first starts. Yeah. Um, and you got this family who've been hiding away, and you got you know um, Emily, was it Emily Emily Blunt, Emily Blunt and her her hubby John, um, and you've got this family that you've got the deaf daughter, mm-hmm. uh, and you you've got uh, I think about sixty or seventy days in something like that, um, and I really like the fact that you just jumped in without giving any sort of pre story um, at all. I think if I'm right in saying that. The Quiet Place Two, I think they might be looking at maybe doing a bit of a kind of backstory to yeah. what happened. Before. I would I, like to see. That I, myself. Think it, I think it's a bit of both. Is I, it? Yeah, I think so. It's definitely. I mean, if you look at the trailer, the trailer is um, 
I think it says day one, and then it kind of follows Emily Blunt for a little bit. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so you're not her fan, though. I mean, I was I was kind of surprised that you you were going to go and watch it because you, you you're not a great fan of your horror. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you say, it's, it's actually kind of more of an examination of like things like loss and you know uh, grief and you know obviously they've got the the young the young baby that's that's you know being born and that sort of thing. I thought the Which young girl a little bit irresponsible, probably. Do you reckon so? Con- considering the um, the the implications of what's going on around them. <laughs> I thought the girl um, that played was it Regan mm-hmm. Millicent, Millicent Simmons, the, the the young actress. I thought she was brilliant. Yeah. She was really good. One thing I liked about her character and, and what surrounded her character was, um, it's like you heard things, and then whenever it was kind of looking at her perspective, it went yeah. quiet. So you could kind yeah. of like see that she would see things, loads of rustling, loads of stuff going on, but obviously she she wouldn't be hearing that. So I liked the kind of the way that it used sound to um, build up tension in some areas, and then went silent in other areas to kind of you know, build up even yeah, more tension. Uh, yeah, I mean, can you imagine what watching this in the cinema would have been like with the crunching popcorn? And, and... that's exactly what I said. When I was watching it. <laughs> because I mean, for the first, I don't know how long it is, but for the first. 20 minutes or so there's absolutely nothing at all all you've got is like the crunching of the walking when they're walking like you know along the path there's a slight slight crunching you've got the wind blowing the, the kind of fields you know whistling and that sort of thing yeah. uh, um her hearing aid kind of makes a, a slight kind of you know pinging sound um but there's absolutely no sound at all, and geez, it would have been a nightmare, I think, yeah. to, to to have to put up with all all that stuff. But you're right; it kind of really then um, it accentuates the the sound, you know, that the soundtrack. Of, it's just really crisp, isn't it? Yeah. And it kind of um, it kind of hits you more than it would have done if there had been any any chat. Well, there is obviously at times. I thought that the relationship between Obviously, because they're they're married and stuff in real life, but with with uh, Krasinski and um, Emily Blunt, yep. you've got you know the two of, the, that scene where they listen to the music together. I thought that was really nice. You know, when they listen to the the Walkman, um, the iPod thing, and and they're just dancing together. And that was that was kind of cute. Well, um, one, one question I would I would pose: um, mm. there's a section when they go down to the river to fish. Yeah, and then. Uh, they go by the waterfall and they're like, it's fine to talk down here, it's noisy, and then they start shouting, why not live next to the river? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I never thought of that. That's a good point. Because then, then they can kind of, you know, if they've got any issues, it's not yeah. a big deal. If they accidentally make a little bit of noise, yeah. it's not necessarily a big deal. I don't know, just spitballing. <laughs> Listen, the way things are going, we'll probably have John on the show in in in, in a few weeks' time. So let's ask him at that point if uh, why the hell? Because I mean, he wrote. I think he co-wrote it as well, isn't it? So he's he's a guy to ask. Uh, so, you know, you got the guy from the Office now, who's primarily known for the American version of the Office originally. Yeah. Um, now writing and directing, he's. I think he's done the second one as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he was persuaded to do the second one. I don't think he. I think I'm right saying he didn't really want to do a second one. He thought because well, it'd be. I successful. mean, spoiler alert. Um, uh, he, he killed himself. In a... is, is, is it too soon? Two years since it was released to, to, to uh, say to people. Yeah. I, I mean, I gave him a, a four-second warning. Here. He doesn't kill himself, but he, he killed himself off. He sacrifices himself. Yeah. Doesn't? So yeah. as a writer, he's killed himself off. So then you think, yeah, there's no sequel because I'm I'm not going to be in it. And then they, they, <laughs> they do a sequel, and you're like, hmm, let's yeah. do a prequel. Yeah, yeah. So I could still be in it. That's brilliant thing it, it looks like it looks like there's definitely scenes from prior um to, I, I hope that kind of does elaborate a little bit more yeah i mean like i said i like the the, the fact that they kind of jumped in but then after that you do then well i kind of want a little bit of a kind of filling in some of the, some of the things yeah. um so i know it kind of starts pretty much i think the story itself starts pretty pretty quickly after it's finished within you know it, the timeline is is pretty quick. It's got Killian Murphy in the the new one, yeah. which is a class actor. So I'd be really interested to see what they what they do with it and whether or not. I just hope that they don't, you know, kind of maybe try to keep ringing, you know, ringing and like maybe another film out of it and end up by the time we get to the third or fourth one, then it's just being watered down. It's it's not the glorious kind of original thing that it used to be. Yeah. 
Um, so I, th- I think the first one made something like what we've got written down here, three hundred and forty million worldwide, which is pretty good for a, a horror film. Um, so it, one, you know, one thing that was funny was um, I remember because I think this came out. Did it come out like a couple of um, of weeks, maybe a little bit lo- longer than that, um, before Bird Box on Netflix? It was before Bird Box. I, I don't know whether Bird Box had been made before that. I seem to remember. Didn't didn't we say maybe it had been made and then it was released? I could be wrong. I could be mixing it up with something else. But yeah. it was kind of released by Netflix on the back of The Quiet Place. And then and and then I remember watching it, and a lot of people were saying to me that Bird Box is good, but it was a it's like a do you know a, a slightly worse version of The Quiet Place, I guess. Or you know, yeah, and um. I was always thinking, well, I enjoyed Bird Box. So people are just saying it because they're a little butthurt about it. I don't know, maybe. But I can kind of see it now, that Bird Box, in comparison to The Quiet Place, it's nowhere near as good, I don't think. I thought Bird Box was great. Yeah, it's um, I, I loved it. Um, and I kind of got a bit bored with all the... You're right, there were a lot of comparisons, weren't there, at the time? And it, because see, it was the, the sight thing, Bird Box, wasn't yeah. it? And this is the sound. And so you had to kind of like, you know, what's going to be next, like touch or taste or whatever. Um... But it, it's, it, it isn't a patch on The Quiet Place. It, it really isn't. Um, and I think it took everybody su- by surprise, not because, I mean, obviously, Emma Blunt's, you know, success, you know, all over the place. And she's really good as, as a mother as well. I mean, she's really cool, in, in, you know, in this. Um, but you know, what kind of took me by surprise, it was it was kind of you know, sort of bringing horror to, you know, the, the, you know, the masses. Because, I mean... Contemporary horror at the moment now seems to be getting a bit of a renaissance, and it's you know there's been a lot of good stuff that's been the stuff that Jordan Peele's been making and and you know that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and I think as well with this one as well, this is going to carry it carry it on. It's just a shame now with obviously it's a shame with the pandemic. You know people are you know getting ill and people are dying and stuff. But it, I, what the hell is going to do to you know the industry? And I, I think already the Brit, the British film industry there was something in one of the newspapers either yesterday or this morning saying that there's been a whole layoff now of you know um tech people and people because they simply can't make any films at the moment now there's, there's nothing going to be done but also it means now you're going to have you had all all the you know the the plans for the marvel universe to continue um with the new releases of stuff you had um obviously the streaming stuff is, is not going to be affected but it's going to be a time when how much new stuff is going to be coming on on that if this goes on and on? So, it's just a shame from that respect. Obviously, the more other important things, but you know, people are losing their livelihoods now, and people are starting to wonder just when the hell you know the next film is going to be, you know, going to be made. So, but uh, I'm I'm guessing that this will be put off until later this year. The Quiet Place Two. Yeah. Uh, maybe they'll, they'll release it the same week as F Nine. Mm. You know, we could do it like a double bill, you know. Oh, or we might have to make a choice. I wonder which one we'll choose. Mm, I don't F9. know. <clears throat> we used to still have to pay your um, your monthly Cineworld. Thing. No, I've um, I, I've emailed to cancel. All oh, oh, right, okay. What's that's the point in me paying for somewhere uh, I can't even go? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, so I think next week we can't really say too much more at the moment. Um, but next week's episode is going to be sponsored mm-hmm. which is nice so we'll talk more during the week but i'll put some of the stuff up on social network um all the 5d social network stuff on the website about who it will be we can't say anything just yet for reasons it will be uh, made apparent when, when we come to do the thing um so which is nice but if anybody does want to um sponsor us um then just get in touch and we'll 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 consider it and we'll take it on board and be nice and get get you know we may be having some more airlisters soon who knows some little irons in the fire i've got to do some more internet stalking so mm. we'll see who we get next um so if i get arrested maybe you'll that'll be the reason why um so mandalorian this coming week that's what we, that's what the plan do you reckon sounds I, good i think it sounds good anything else you want to bring up before we put a little can on it today nope I'm thinking about okay right so thank you all for listening um this week the uh, listening figures and everything have been great last few weeks so um obviously down to us and not down to the guests or anything like that mm-hmm, just, mm-hmm. obviously down to us so thank you everybody for listening and we'll speak to you guys next week so from zach and myself goodbye bye bye